Hello, how you guys doing? Hope you're doing well here. Well, I have a video. Um, and this, I had to call it, um, uh, oh, excuse me, Sundown Series. And there's been a lot of stuff going on. But, but there's some good things behind it because the people who's been harassing people in these Sundown Towns, revenge is, is coming. Beaches were for whites only. Blacks were considered bad for tourism. And largely that sentiment in Sarasota exists today. They segregated the beaches where black people couldn't even go to the beach at all. Over a decade later, the city defied the Civil Rights Act and passed an ordinance making interracial beaches illegal. In 1979, Dr. James and three other black activists filed a federal lawsuit that changed the course of Sarasota history. Mason also broke both color and gender lines at the Sarasota County Commission. Later in the show, we talk with Sheila Sanders, who, like Carolyn Mason, broke both color and gender lines. For this situation, we're gonna sit here and focus on black women. We're not gonna do everybody oh, involved. We're not gonna do this whole thing. Right sorry up. about that. Um. That's just a short clip of what, what I'm about to, about to um, introduce. And uh, let me let me see here. You know, this thing with sundown towns has really been something. An eye opener. You know, people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to face it. But they can't fix. They can't put two to two together. Um, that there's consequences to something that keep going on and on and on and keep getting ignored and people are trying and then people getting upset when they're telling you the problem like there there's a problem in America and how can you get over the past when the past is keep repeating itself how do you how do you get over the past they keep telling you to get over the past but they constantly Reminding you, we see this. It's been on lately about this young man that walked through, just walking through a neighborhood like what happened to the young man a few years ago jogging. He was just jogging through the neighborhood, a young black man jogging through the neighborhood. You know, he didn't he didn't go near no one's property, and all of a sudden these people get like a witch hunt mentality, a lynch mob mentality, and start chasing him down. This happened again, and you figure that, and it was world, it, it was um, nationwide. Mont Aubrey, you figure that some people would learn a lesson. They they catch him being a bigot. They catch these people being racist, and they just, you know, it's just unbelievable. You know, like they just continue to be racist. And that's why I'm always convinced that racism is a deep, deep hatred in spirit. It's deep, you know. You know, the brothers and sisters that consider themselves Hebrews, they, they're right. There's something spiritually with this. You know, it's more than just, it's one thing if you don't like a human being. But, you know, America in a certain type of Americans have a certain disdain and hatred, you know, that goes back in history. And then we've seen the history repeats itself. And the people who's being a victim of it, they, they never caused the problem. They just come into existence. And, you know, coming to, come to a person's past. And for someone to harass somebody simply for walking down the street, I mean, it's like, man. And so, and in some cases, just doing what, just mind their own business, just working or just enjoying life. And it's like, wow, these people are willing to lose their jobs. They're willing to lose everything for their hatred. They're willing to lose everything. It doesn't make any sense to be that doggone prejudice against a group of people. 
and to keep it up and thinking that, you know, the consequences of your prejudice. If it means you losing your job, your livelihood, you know, is it worth it? Just by not liking somebody? You know, for who, what God made them to be? What put it on their body, their bones and body, their skin, their flesh and everything? It just don't make no sense. You know, it's really dumb, you know, that we still, the people want, don't want to have change. And that's why we, we some, in some parts of this country, it would be, it's like they're under a curse. Because they don't want to change their mindset. You know, how we say that we love America, some of us can say that we love America, but we can't even get over the fact that we still got this inner battle. We got this inner battle with, with, with skin color with ethnic and heritage and things. Don't change my way of life. And then the people that they that they victimizing, they're not bothering them. They they're not messing with them. They go over and start some stuff with them. You know? Then it then, then they lie and then say that th these people started. And America has a history of it. That's why the si the series about the sun downtown. That's why they would they were sun downtown because people kept on. And then it's like you know it, you know why don't some people leave it alone? And I've heard people on TikTok. It's like you can't you don't understand. You know that's just one of the many things that I that they, people don't even understand. America is way up under judgment. That's one of the many things, but. You know, other than the regular sins, uh, fornication, adultery, you know, the shiftedness, rebellion, you know, witchcraft, you name it. I mean, and then the thing about it is that trip me out. People don't think that which what you see in the Bible act like it's not going to happen in our time. I mean, there were weather disasters. In, in the Bible, there was natural disaster where it literally took out populations of people, and we've seen it in our time. But it was a lot of with its consequences and circumstances. And um, it's it's sad that people have to. We keep seeing this in America, and it's and some of us in America want to move on, but you got people that still want to carry the same spirit of, of racism. They, they they want to skip, they want to carry the same spirit of racism. It's terrible, and and it's it's something and it's and we're in in it time period where people can cover things up but now old things is about to come to pass that you can take someone's life and don't think you're going to pay consequences if the law don't catch up with you the most high going to catch up with you and, and I was telling my friend how you know it's a darn shame you have to be careful being a truck driver, someone being a truck driver, but you gotta be careful. It's one thing you gotta worry about going into a, a bad neighborhood, um, just being an ordinary person. But damn, you can't even go on the outskirts with some some person that's not used to having another culture of people around. Them. So they gotta figure out to do some kind of, I I think it's some kind of ritual. To take <laughs> because so, someone with a skin color come up in their town. It's some it's something wrong. And then there were people who were upset because people were and they say that they were cheering people on who lost things in the in the hurricane and things like that. No, what people and I see not one person being cheerful and, 
and celebrating and someone losing their life. People just don't understand that. They don't accept the fact that this the, the racism is still here, and it's, it's evidence. And they're trying to cover it up, but you can't keep covering something up. You can't. You just can't keep covering something up and think it's not. It's something that's going to break. I got this video for you. How do I get the most out of my life? Let me show you. Peace of mind to get my sweat on. Classes for everyone with the staff. It's always. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book. The N word is no secret in the service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay. White community terrorists in Florida, Sarasota to be exact, harass a black youth, a black child, okay? Young black man. This young black man was walking in his neighborhood in Sarasota, Florida, just trying to get better reception on his phone due to the hurricane. Not that he needed any reason or explanation as to why he's walking around in this neighborhood in Sarasota, Florida. He lives there, but he's walking around. And here goes these cowards. This guy, Stephen Correga, a coward, and a group of other people, okay? Coming out of my house. So if you live here or you have a friend that visiting here, that's fine. I'm not in front of your house. You're in my house. You're actually 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 in my house. And I, I think I can walk around my neighborhood. Oh, you're yeah. <laughs> right. you're you know, keep asking me the same question yeah. over and over and over and over and over. Over. This man following me. This is harassment, right? Yeah, that's harassment, right? This, that's harassment, right? I think what's good to my wife, yes. Look, 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 look. <laughs> they followed you. Yeah. Why do you brand it up? When we moved into our home a year ago, we had a bug issue. One day, I came across custody, and I am so thankful that I did. I mean, Oh, my God. 
confidence on any list of SUV features. But oh, um, something happened to Steven Carriga afterwards. Watch this. Sarasota, Florida used to be a sundown town, and it probably still is. And a consequence update for the neighborhood creepers, Stephen Carrega. If you remember, he was the member of the lynch mob that was most unhinged. The one who went into his car to grab some sort of weapon, to use it on the team for simply smiling and laughing and doing literally nothing wrong. After this team has told this group many times to stop following him and to stop harassing him and to leave him alone, and that he does in fact live there. But even if he didn't live there, this type of behavior is not only inappropriate, but deeply racist. And What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My good name is Gracie D. I hope you guys are doing well. So on our today's episode, it's actually a continuation on the episode that we did yesterday of this young teenager who was just busy minding his own business existing in his neighborhood in Sarasota, Florida. And these four young men decided, no, you should not be walking here. You should not be here because people of your country should not be staying in this neighborhood. So we got an update. And actually, surprisingly, it's, that it's just today that I just found out that Sarasota, Florida used to be a sundown town. Sarasota, yeah, surprisingly, right? I also didn't know that until I had to do my research. So I got some updates for you on what went on. Let's watch this video and then we'll come back to it. Sarasota, Florida used to be a sundown town and it probably still is. There is documented history that shows that Sarasota was a sundown town. I came across this paper that talked about Sarasota residents not wanting black residents to be able to be on the beaches of Sarasota and what they were subjected to if they went into white neighborhoods or wealthy neighborhoods in Sarasota. Just by traveling outside of black neighborhoods, black residents in Sarasota faced extreme violence and harassment for being in areas that wasn't designated for them. They had to petition and really fight to get access to certain places like the beach and other parts of the town. The beaches on Sarasota stayed segregated well into the 1960s. I know we're in 2024, but y'all, if y'all do the math, that's not that long ago. I feel like racial history and racial prejudices in the area just don't die and go away. So if Sarasota was a sundown town and it wasn't that long ago, it's probably still a sundown town. But I don't know. What do y'all think? And a consequence update for the neighborhood creepers, Stephen Carrega. If you remember, he was the member of the lynch mob that was most unhinged. The one who went into his car to grab some sort of weapon to use it on the team for simply smiling and laughing and doing literally nothing wrong after this team has told this group many times to stop following him and to stop harassing him and to leave him alone and that he does in fact live there but even if he didn't live there this type of behavior is not only inappropriate but deeply racist and it is shocking and aggravating for all of us to see it is also very frustrating when they try to gaslight and try to discredit the victim and doubling down, tripling down on their behavior and actions by doing so shows us that they've really learned nothing and it is not our responsibility to teach them. So instead, all we'd like to see are some sort of consequences for these actions to make it clear to everyone, including the people in Sarasota, that this type of behavior, it will not be tolerated. So without further ado, here's your update. Stephen Carrega has been fired from the London Stock Exchange Group because they do not support his racist action. Thank you for that swift investigation and validation for that team and what he went through. The victim who went through this is on Instagram. Go to his page right now. Show him support. Show him love. He's a rapper. Go support his music. He's a great guy. I talk to him a lot. You'll love him. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I've been looking to do this all week. Well, let me try this again. Stephen Gregor has been fought. Look, here comes a consequence, 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 consequences of my actions chasing me right now. Found the fourth one. That's right, there's a fourth member of the lynch mob in Sarasota. That's four men total that they thought was appropriate to send after a teenager for simply communicating with one of their wives while being black. The wife overreacted because of her implicit bias and deeply rooted racism. 
I can assume. And it ended with Stephen Craig pulling a weapon out of the car, which they deny is a gun. But at this point, I don't believe him because they said it's not a gun. Because they said it isn't, I don't believe it for that reason. So I think maybe it could be. In fact, probably is. Anyway, here's the fourth guy. Found him. Hello, Stephen Burroughs. We got two Steves here? Well, we all know what you're here for. Give us the space and the sound. He has been suspended pending further investigation. I love, I love seeing this comment. I really do. You see? There's no need for us to get up in an uproar. There's no need for us to go and stand in front of his house, even though that would be a great thing to do. But somebody in the comments says, we don't need newspapers or the TV. The internet works just as fast. And look how fast the internet did its job. Found where he lives, found his job, contacted his job, got his LinkedIn taken down, uh, got his Facebook changed, I think twice, because he took these, his original Facebook down. And let me just preference and say, it wasn't just my community, it was all communities who did this. Black, white, brown, Spanish. Everybody contributed to this because everybody is tired of seeing just blatant racism for absolutely no reason. Thank you to everybody who um, sent emails, phone calls, contacted officials and everything like that. This is what we have to do to stop people from being this way. Steven Correga has been terminated from his job. It was reported a couple of days ago that they were investigating the matter, but they moved forward with terminating him. You can go to their Instagram page and see it for yourself. They posted this statement about four hours ago saying, you may be aware of a concerning video shared on social media which featured one of our employees in the U.S. The individual involved was initially suspended while we investigated the matter. The investigation has now concluded and the individual's employment has been terminated. We expect the conduct of our employees to meet a high standard. LSEG operates a zero tolerance policy against any form of racism, discrimination, prejudice, or harassment. The empath in me like never wants to see someone like lose their livelihood. But at the same time, it's like your actions have consequences. And for the life of me, I just cannot like fathom like what these guys were thinking. Like, why didn't they just back off? Here's a quick update. Steve's employer posted this story on TikTok saying that they are investigating the reports concerning one of their employees and that this individual has been suspended while they investigate. You can go over to their Instagram page, click their profile photo, and look at it for yourself. The location for the walkthrough has been updated. Everyone's going to be meeting at Turner Park at Sky Ranch, which is not far from the neighborhood that all of this occurred in. According to the organizer, per the mother's wishes, she doesn't want the walkthrough or demonstration to happen inside of their properties because she doesn't want to be retaliated against and she still has to live there and deal with these people. But it is still happening. If you have questions, you can reach out to the organizer on Facebook, Sarah Norris, and, and I'll tag her TikTok page in the comments as well. I'm going to make another update after this one showing you all what Steve's wife says that their side of the story is because allegedly social media has it all wrong. I highly doubt they'll let me live there though, especially with me covering this story. Someone said after the march, those that can afford to live there should move there. If I can get 500,000 people to donate me $2, we will be in there like swimwear. This house is actually on the same street. Yeah guys, so actually there's a clip that I think I kind of missed it. This, this clip that this guy was saying that their door camera bell does not show this guy harassing the wife as allegedly they had said why this man was following this kid because he had initially harassed the wife and we had it in the first video that i did 
saying you are like you did to my wife and uh, it's quite sad but then again they're facing what they deserve you know and still apart from them losing their job they need to face charges because this was wrong at all counts i mean sarasota used to be a sundown town and in 2024 you're still treating people of my kind like this like it's not acceptable at all guys and the funny part is uh lately i've done these videos like on people talking about sundown towns and it's funny that I, i'm finding these comments and one person say i still haven't seen any proof that these towns are sundown i don't believe everything i hear i mean like history is there what else do you want to believe and uh, there's another comment that went on ahead also on one of the videos and said what is wrong with black people there is no sundown town in 2024 what about those towns that oh black men are still getting lynched? What about those towns that black men are still are still missing and later they are found deleted and they have ways on how or propagandas on what happened and some of these stories uh, they get to a point of being justifiable. Maybe some are like, oh, it was self-defense. You know, they, they, they just yeah. give so many reasons as to why things happened. And the reason as to why more, more stories don't go out there is because uh, they don't try to get enough evidence to show what really happened. But if they tried and dig hard, like deeper, to know what really went on, these stories will be coming more out to light. You know, and people will be understanding. So uh, there is this woman by the same Sarah Norris. Uh, you can check her out on her you are uh, on her Facebook. Actually, she has posted. Actually, guys, there will be a walk to stand against a walk against racism in Sarasota. When we vote, we send a message that we will be heard. We send a message that we will be heard. We send a message that we will be heard. And with so much at stake, our fundamental right to vote is on the line. We can't afford to miss this chance. Vote by November 5th. Back then, Apex Police Chief Sam Bagwell acted with near impunity to carry out racist attacks. His brutality was well documented by news outlets of the time, but he escaped most punishment because he was, as the Carolina Times put it, a valuable asset to the average southern town. His he was a valuable asset. So let's see what Yah has to say about this stuff. Let's go to the book of Psalms 11. We're going to go to Psalms 11. That's what we read at the beginning. Let's read this again because it's so relevant. Psalm 11. Psalm 11, verse 1. In Yehoah put I my trust. How say ye to my soul? Flee as a bird to your mountain. We're talking about these mountain towns in North Carolina now. Go ahead. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may probably shoot at the upright in heart. That's what we just we just witnessed in this, right? That's just what David is talking about. They make their bow ready. So we have this guy who makes his bow ready and aims it at the children of Israel. And this elderly black man was one of those victims. Mm. Back then, Apex Police Chief Sam Bagwell acted with near impunity to carry out racist attacks. His brutality was well documented by news outlets of the time, but he escaped most punishment because he was, as the Carolina Times put it, a valuable asset to the average southern town. His How does y'all deal with these people? Verse 4. Yehoah is in his Kodesh temple. The throne of Yehoah is in Shemaim. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. 
He tries the children of men to see if anybody going to stand up and do what's right. Y'all know this person is a racist. You know he's a murderer. Who's going to do something about it? FBI, CIA, president, vice president, anybody, mayor? Go ahead. Yehovah tries the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest. A horrible this, storm. This shall be the portion of their cup. This is why y'all is judging you heathen. This is why. Because y'all have allowed monsters like this to kill, murder, and persecute our people. And they have gone free. They have not been arrested. They have not been persecuted. And now Yah is going to bring judgment. He's bringing the judgment. He's wiping out entire towns and cities in North Carolina and across this nation because of the way you mistreat his chosen people. His job, quote, to keep Negroes in their place. He's a mean man now. Yeah, mean man by him. One November Tuesday in 1952, Bagwell arrested Lynn Council, claiming he was a suspect in an unsolved convenience store robbery. Council would not admit to a crime yes, he says he did not commit. Lynn recalls Bagwell became more and more frustrated by his denial. He even said that milk was stew. Apex Town historian Toby Holliman says then Council was taken to Wake County for more interrogation. The next day, a trial. At which time it appears he pled not guilty because he wasn't guilty. The next morning, two of Bagwell's sheriff deputies took Lynn and the other seven suspects to their police cops. They drove 10 miles into the country to what's now a two-lane highway near a suburban neighborhood. Council says he was led underneath this tree where a noose was looped around his neck. And then they got on the other end of the rope and pulled it, so they pulled his feet off the ground. And they say that wouldn't happen. The police would do something about it. It was the police doing this. So who are you going to call? Mm. Who can we call on other than y'all? Justin P. Read that, please. Justin, Shalom, brother Justin. Justin says, my family is from North Carolina. I know exactly what you mean about these small towns. Y'all protect you if your car breaks down to be here. Facts. And I'm going to show you just how unrepentant these heathen are. After y'all brought judgment on these areas and our people were calling out the heathen that this is judgment against them for what they have done to y'all's people, I'm going to show you how they responded. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. Yes. So he's gonna say, don't believe the hype. There are no sundown towns in America. As he sits there with his flag in his mountain looking place, or maybe that is it looks kind of like one of those log cabins, but it might be a garage. I don't know. But this is what they want. They want to put a spell over our people and make us think that there are, there are no more sundown towns. And they could actually put this out here. And this is why y'all is judging them. Because for him to do this means he has zero repentance for what he and his ancestors and his people have done to us. And then we have people like this. Watch this. Oh, I'm so happy that all of these southern states and towns are getting their homes washed away. Their children, their parents, their animals, their whole entire lives washed away. All praise to the Most High. Do you hear sick, crazy, disgusting, and twisted that sounds? Some people don't believe it. They still don't believe it. They still, well, that's just the past. Really? It's the past, huh? A black man found dead hanging after filing a lawsuit against the cops. This story is going to make your blood boil. Put up the picture for a mass here. According to the Atlanta Black Star, Denoris Richardson, a black man who earlier this year 
filed a lawsuit against the local police in Alabama was found dead last month, hanging from a rope in an abandoned house. His family believes the 39-year-old man may have been lynched by the police. He was suing from the Sheffield Police Department in Culbert County. Richardson's body was found hanging by a rope from a beam in an abandoned house on September 28th after the Colbert County Sheriff's Office received a call about a suspicious vehicle. Bellatine said, quote, we've spoken with the mother at length, the sheriff told AL.com. She seemed to think that Mr. Richardson was depressed because his estranged wife had been giving him some problems. They had been separated. There were a lot of things going on in Mr. Richardson's life, end quote. But Bonita Richardson denied telling the sheriff her son had been depressed. Quote, my son was joyful, she said. He didn't have any mental issues. He would never kill himself. He would not hurt himself. Richardson also said her son was under a lot of stress since filing the lawsuit because he feared retaliation from the officers who had already abused him. Quote, he really was in fear for his life. She told Alabama Media Group, I think it's a homicide, end quote. His wife, Leanne Richardson, told local media that police had repeatedly arrested physically beaten and harassed him over the years which intensified after he filed the lawsuit in February accusing six officers of violating his fourth amendment rights through excessive force as well as denying him medical services under the Americans with Disability Act quote I need answers his wife Leanne Richardson told the Alabama media group this was made to look like it's not a she said her husband had been harassed by Sheffield police after he filed the lawsuit against them. The suit centers around an officer we've previously covered. Put him up for a mass. See, we've covered him before. His name is Max Dotson. You see, Officer Dotson, a former cop who in an unrelated incident threatened the life of a different black man who was talking to his daughter, here's video of that altercation. Is this your property? No, man. Is this your property? Big fat boy. No, man. Is this your property? No, man. Nope. It's gonna be my property. How you know, bro? Sheffield Police Lieutenant Max Dotson assaulted him by grabbing his arms. As
as if to arrest him. Even though Richardson had done nothing wrong, it is not clear from the lawsuit as to why Dotson grabbed his arms. But Dotson was later fired and convicted on assault charges over another incident in 2022. Former cop was also arrested on DUI charges earlier this year, career criminal. But after Richardson was transported, okay, transported to jail that day, he ended up further allegedly attacking, uh, being attacked by the Sheffield police officer, Darian Fountain. You're looking at him. That is Officer Fountain, who struck him in the throat with the palm of his hand and shoved his head against him. I'm sorry that the video is not working, but um, but uh, I guess, it, sorry about that. Um, now, here's the question to the people who always said this. This is, this is old, this is old news. And, it, and, and the one woman said that uh, about who cares about the color of the skin, the black woman. Well, apparently these people that care about the color of the skin. Because every time they see a black man, they, they get an instant reason to just want to antagonize. And did you know that Tennessee got hit with, with the storm too? Tennessee got hit with the storm along with North Carolina, Florida, Georgia. And, and this is what people were saying. They was, they was basically coordinated that when something is demonic activity would happen, that that place would be judged. Tennessee, it probably, it, but um, and, and probably Alabama, but but this this time it might be Alabama next. Some of these white people can't put it together. They can't put it together. They still haven't figured this out yet. Black people have told you who we are in the Bible. Black people have told you. Some things, and some of them just ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. That's just the past. So, the young man had to have a camera there just to show this in the present. We constantly have to prove that it's, it's, it's not of the past. We all Americans. We all Amer Americans, and, but you can't be in a certain neighborhood. We all Americans, but, but you can't. You can't come through my town. You gotta leave my town by sundown. We all Americans, right? You know, this black military veterans like other military veterans to fight for this country. And even till this day, imagine, just like it was back then, and they would go to a sundown town, they wouldn't even be accepted. But this is not new, because they did it when they came back from World War One and World War Two. The evil that this place has. So you put your life on line for somebody who has a biased, un unreality check of their mind that except that you are another human being that speak the same language, born in the same land, probably believe in the same God, but they still can't get it out their head. Just because you're made differently according to your hair texture and your skin texture. Just imagine that. It's not their fault. So who would you come out to? But just just and, and just does someone have a a disdain for someone to the point that you would literally want to unalive them as a person who that no one have done nothing to you done nothing most of the, you and you then they attack people who don't they don't get the people that that just who's evil that might be black they get the black people who have, don't, don't don't do anything and, and, and somebody can justify a reason 
but they, they but they pick on an instant person, make their life a living hell. But when, when some people, when black people bring this up, oh, you 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 you, you they shift blame. You're bringing up the past. Well, well, we don't know. Maybe he did something. Walking through the neighborhood. Is that what it's come down to? He might say hi to the man's wife. That's it. He wouldn't flirt with her or call her out her name, threaten to jump on her. What was called for that? So this dumbass lost his job in Florida. And so did his buddy. We're telling you, we are the people of the book, and they still can't get out the mentality. They will go to the grave hating black people. They will go into the pits of hell hating black people. That's that's deep when you sit down and think about that. That you can you, I, I mean. Regardless of a person's lifestyle, color, skin, origin, where they come from, you got to be a sick human being to have that much hatred, disdain for people. I mean, it, it would be like me not having this opposite feeling towards white people. It, 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 it doesn't make any sense. Even though that there were some people, white people did evil like these these individuals are doing, but I don't think I I know that they all all think alike. Just like all black people, don't you don't do bad. And but there's some black people that do make bad decisions. But it's like TV has programmed you so much, and word of mouth has programmed these people so much. That is like how this, and, I, and it was so funny one time, I tell the story about one of my ex-girlfriends, um, she's, she was biracial, and her grandma, they was from Corbett, Kentucky, and one day, you know, you know, her grandma was having a talk, but she talked, and she said, you know, James, you know, she's, you know, she's an elderly white woman, she's passed away now. She said, one time I asked my friend, you know, we got to a conversation. What is it about black people you don't like? Do you know her, Sinead's grandmother? And, and, and the woman said, I don't know. She simply don't know why no one ever did anything to them as black. Talk about something demonic. Like you hate that, that, that that's why we, you know, the one, people that consider themselves Hebrews or believers believe that things, things move. This is a generational thing. Racism is generational in America, like there's in other parts of the world, and certain parts of the world is generational too. But this, but this place has kept it to a whole magnitude of racism. Like you might have seen racism in Brazil, I heard it in Canada, I heard it over in different parts of Europe, even Ukraine to Russia. But this place takes it to a whole different caliber. The cannibalism of people, that to the point that they own them and they did them worse than an animal. Then that's how, and it's, and it's really that you have to be overseer. And they always got to be an overseer over you. Some have that mentality. People don't believe it's all connected. It's connected. It's like they don't even know why. They, I've heard, been around people who said they, they, you know, they pick up some using the N word in their house and describe other people. When it can't particularly come to black people, they had to unlearn that, that mentality. But some choose not to unlearn it. But we, but we all, but. We all supposed to love God, love Yeshua, Jesus, but yet you have some people that still consider themselves Christians. Some are Christians and others believe in God, but they don't believe in righteousness and morality. But when it comes to skin color, they have this, it's a, 
deficient, deficient, a deficiency of reality. And so, yeah, and even though that there were other people that suffered in these consequences with the storms, but it was more, it, this was just one of the many incidents that probably reason why. This witchcraft in this country, this um, child sacrifice in this country, we abuse people, we don't obey the laws, and this rebellion. So that's a, many other reasons why I believe we're paying the price for it, just like in other parts of the world too. We're paying, we're paying the price for the sin we've done in this earth. And we're witnessing the things, just like the people in the Bible. That's why people reverence the Bible, because these people saw it in their time in the Bible. And the thing about it is that we've seen it in our time. And we and then sometimes, you know, sometimes I wonder, do, they, do people really believe that, do they believe in God, for one? Number two, if they do believe in God, you do know that He's a spirit, right? That's been since the beginning of the beginning. So He witnessed the things you read in the what is, is it in the Torah, the Bible, some people might be the Quran. He was around when this stuff happened. He seen the sins that the sins that we did do now. What people did, did back in their era. What makes you think he won't and and, and, and this was he allowed the consequences to build up. But this judgment had to call for it. And then when he sent his people before, he warns people, repent for what you do. Repent from your heart. Pray. Seek my face. People don't want to listen until Helene Milton comes on the board. And, and it's more to come. And, and other situations happen with man made stuff, man made what the government is. But some people still don't get it until it's too late. But it, will it change? I would love to see it change in my lifetime. But the only way, when it comes to this issue, this particular issue of race, as I said before, it's not going away. The only way to eradicate racism off, off the country and off the planet is she will have to do it. It's the spirit behind it. And it's behind the jealousy, envies, and strifeful, murdering spirit. Don't believe me? Ask God, God himself in prayer. But anyway, I just wanted to make this video. Yeah, man. You know, just leave people alone. If you don't want to be around somebody. And then, didn't Sarasota get hit with the hurricane? You, and they still have they still haven't figured it out yet. Every time they do something evil and think that they're gonna cover up such such things like this, evil in the eyesight of God, they don't see the consequences coming. We told you four hundred years is up. Now they see the consequences. Alright then ladies and gentlemen. Hope you like this video, like and subscribe, and a hey, shout out to the people who expose this. Keep on doing what you're doing. Shout out to the people who in the channel too. Take care.